haven't actually doing anything. Oh. That that's why it's sort of a you can work with people or work by yourself. It does not require going into a lab to do it. Okay. Some of the wording you might find talks about you're doing actually performing the labs. I think I took some of it out. I hopefully I took all of that out. But the originally it was you know here's the position time graph move in front of the motion sensor so that it does that. I find that it's much more meaningful for 110 students to be able to do that than 251 students because it's just a math thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can do that. Just wanted to double check. So then this lab still turn, gets turned in Monday. Yeah. That's not what we're working on Wednesday. Right. On Wednesday, you're shooting kids. Yay. That sounds cool. Yeah. Just do not shoot each other. You know, do the wear holes. <laughs> do safety rules. <laughs> Other questions? Right. I'm going to move on to do chapter five stuff. So chapter four is where the first test is. The first test is chapters two through four. So just so you know, in terms of note taking or however you do it, we're about to branch into what I usually call test 1B as opposed to test 1A. Historically, the reason why it's 1A and 1B is that originally I didn't get the first test until we were done with chapter 7, and it was all together. That's a lot. That is a lot. It, that's the way it sure came across. And so that's why I broke it up into two tests that are now 1A and 1B. It counts as two tests. It does not count as two parts of one test. Okay. How many tests do we have total? Uh, typically four. Oh, that's not that bad. 1A, 1B, 3, and 4. That happened to 2. Although test 3 is usually the fourth test. The numbering system <laughs> evolves. At some point, I thought, I've got too many tests. Like, well, I'm not going to change it. <laughs> like a thermodynamics, the zeroth law of thermodynamics. They figured it out after they come up with laws 1 and 2, and they thought, I'm not, I'm not changing that. But it's more fundamental, so let's just call it zero. Okay. <laughs> to my knowledge, there is no negative one law of thermodynamics. Is it actually a zeroless? Oh my gosh, there it is. Zeroless law? The zero provides an independent definition of temperature without reference to entropy. Oh, that means so. something to somebody. When entropy is zero. Yeah. Which is not. Oh. All right. Chapter five. Force. There's still no Jedi to tell me. Cleverly, the symbol I use for force is a capital F. How do you get that? I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> What is a force? Wait, pressure applied to something? No, no. Flashing back. My daughter was writing a formal lab report. She went to early college here, but she was in a chemistry class. And she said pressure was a force and then something else. And I said, this is wrong. And, and she said, that's what the book says. I said, no, there's no way the book says that. And she opened up the book to the definition of pressure in the back, and it, she said what the book said. I said, the book is wrong. <laughs> then I went to Dr. Williford, and I said, that, just so you know, the definition of pressure in the back of the book is wrong. And she said, yeah, that book's got a number of problems. <laughs> I love Ms. Williford. She was a great chemistry teacher. So anyway. It's related to pressure, but it's not pressure. Okay. Okay. It's something like hold on. <laughs> there, there's the because I looked at it at a textbook and the pictures right there, but I can only see like half the word. It's like <laughs> something that is pushing onto something else. Oh my god! It's like a mass that's counteracting or, or acting on 
some other object. You start out with a mass. So mass is mass is a scalar, so it can't be a force. Oh, but I, I think Hector sort of hit one of the keywords there. There's the formal definition, and then there's the practical definition. You were almost there with the practical definitions. You guys, so I don't really remember. <laughs> you said push. Uh, that's half of it. Push. Pull. Push or pull. Um, yeah, direction does matter. It is a vector. But okay. it's push or pull. That's the practical definition. The official definition is an influence that really nails it down. An influence that um, might cause acceleration. <laughs> Although they usually say may cause acceleration, which means it's given permission. But I, I really don't care for the formal definition just because it's so incredibly vague. Push or pull works. Until you get to, I guess, if you become a physics major at some point, you're going to push or pull. It gets kind of nebulous, but it's good for classical physics. All right, so there are a couple different approaches I, I've taken, and I apologize because you'll see some of this in the video. But hopefully, as you see it in the video, you'll go, yeah, okay, this stuff, it makes all sense. It makes sense now. But there are only a certain number of forces that we will deal with now, and then we will add to it as we go. But friction, tension, other, even the balance, which might not make sense at the moment, normal. It spells out F tom. <laughs> That's why I needed to bounce. Other does show up. There are a couple rules with forces, and so let me just write down the forces, the two rules. Forces always come in pairs. There's not a lot of times that we can legitimately get away with always in this class, but this is one of them. Forces always going in pairs. And each force in that pair acts on a different object. We are objects. As human beings, we the physics does not go, well, that's a human. The rules with the human are different than the rules are with the box. The rules are the same. If I push on this table, I'm applying a normal force. If I apply a normal force, forces come in pairs, so there's got to be a second normal force somewhere. That second normal force is on me. This table is pushing on me as I push on it. So the forces come in pairs, the fact that there's two normal forces there, they act on a different object. There's one normal force on me, one force on the table, opposite directions. I push on the table that way, the table pushes on me this way. Can you explain how the thing is pushing on you that way? I feel it. Yeah. Uh, when I'm touching the table, I feel the table. That's, that's the force that it exerts on me. You never really touch anything. It, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that gets, a, that, that's a can of worms I don't want to open quite yet. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> if I'm walking along, I'm going to run into the wall. That's true. In case you don't know what walking into the wall looks like, that's, that's it. <laughs> when I hit the wall, I pushed on the wall. Yeah. But the wall also pushed on me. And the, oh, one yeah. way, one, I felt it. The other one is if the wall had not been there, I would not have slowed down like that. So there had to have been something slowing me down. Oh. That objects, 
want to keep doing whatever they're doing with the concept of inertia. Objects want to keep maintaining a constant velocity, and if they don't, something has to be affecting it. There must be some influence, a force, which causes a change in the velocity. Thus, so I've been connecting force and acceleration. There's a change in velocity, there's acceleration, and if there's acceleration, there's a force. So, my running into the wall, the wall definitely affected me. If the wall didn't affect me, I would have kept going. And then I'd be accused of being a ghost. <laughs> or a witch. Or a moron. Um, what's, what's that movie where the guy, like, oh, no, never mind. King of Ghosts? No, like, uh, what's it called? Terminator. Oh, I was going in a completely wrong direction there. <laughs> Terminator? <laughs> All right, doesn't he walk through the wall? He walks through the wall. Oh, but the wall, he crashes through the wall, right? Yeah. I don't think the wall is intact when he goes through it. <laughs> Did I answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Good enough. Hopefully some of it will be on clear as we go. Mm -hmm. Now, let's start out with the gravitational force here. Gravitational force, there's basically two varieties that we'll run into. There's, well, First off, they involve two masses. Any two masses, there's a gravitational force. But if one mass is small compared to compared to a huge mass, and when I say huge mass, I'm talking planet, moon, something of that size, or bigger. And I say small, an elephant would be small compared to the size of the Earth, so elephant would count as small. So if a mass is small compared to a huge mass, then we're dealing with something that we generally refer to as weight. So, gravitation, um, so weight is a specific case for gravitational force. So like we're the small object and Earth is the big object? Yes. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Now, uh, I said small mass, oh, let's see. If mass is small compared to huge mass and near huge mass. So if I'm in the space station, I'm not really near the huge mass. It's not really weight at that point. It's, there's a gravitational pull on me still, but there's not a, it, I think weight is a misnomer at that point. If it's just two masses, Then it's the general, it's just force of gravity or gravitational force either way. And weight is still measured in kilograms? No, no. All right, I'm going to overblow my reaction to this. Sorry, right, you're okay with that? Yeah, you're cool. No! <laughs> the reason why, I think it's biology people and chemistry people, well, actually anyone other than physicists. Kilogram is a unit of mass. Kilogram is not a unit of weight. Right. Despite what you might be told elsewhere. And that, that's why I had asked it, because I was okay. thinking like it would be in pounds, right? Even though Or newtons. Or new oh yeah, okay. So newtons. Is the are either the because is there a standard measurement for weight? Is it pounds? The pounds and newtons are standard units for force of any type. Yeah, but the, the whole kilogram thing is, it, it's like trick nails on the chalkboard. So. <laughs> okay. Weight, no kilograms. Because we're talking about mass when we're talking about kilograms. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes! <laughs> that balances out, right? Yeah. <laughs> if I ever do something like that, and it, just if I hit you wrong and just say not today. <laughs> okay. I did that in one tenth of the first half, and still just as many students put down kilograms for weight <laughs> as before. It had absolutely no effect. Uh -huh. <laughs> Alright. Now, since they come in pairs and they act in opposite directions, the, the forces, if you ever will eventually work towards the force diagram, the two forces will point towards each other. 
In other words, there's a gravitational force between me and the Earth. The force on me is downwards towards the center of the Earth, and the force on the Earth is upwards towards me. The Earth is pulling on me with a little more than 200 pounds of force, and I'm pulling on the Earth with a little bit more than 200 pounds of Earth. We're being pulled towards each other. If I got up on that table and I jumped down, I'm now in free fall, but the Earth is also, in a sense, free fall. They're we're coming towards each other. I will fall roughly a meter. The Earth will come up roughly the size of a nucleus. Oh, okay. Because it's so massive, it's not going to, it's 200 pounds, it's not much to, for the Earth. But it will move some, just nothing that we can measure. Any questions about gravitational force at the moment? Normal force. Normal is a math term. What does normal mean? Oh gosh, Kirkland and Jason? Yes. I remember my seventh class where somebody knows that. <laughs> for some reason, students who haven't had math in a few years and haven't had to pass out for two aren't familiar with it. I'm surprised I remembered it. <laughs> it's perpendicular. That was not a slight against the classes where people didn't know it or people don't know it. It's just, it's just refreshing to get more than just one stare. <laughs> it means perpendicular because the normal force is always perpendicular to the surfaces of contact. So a requirement for this is I have two objects touching. Contact is required. So when I pushed on the table, the table pushed on me. That, because there was contact there, there was a normal force. It was perpendicular to the surface. So it is perpendicular to surfaces. And I pushed on the table that way, the table pushed on me. So when I draw the pairs, they will be in opposite directions. Gravitational force is trying to bring objects together. Normal force is trying to keep them apart. The normal force is what keeps me from going through. Or will at least try to keep it. In the Terminator, if I went walking through the wall, the wall tried to stop me. It did exert a normal force in the opposite direction I was moving. It just was not successful. Tension? I mean, it's a pulling force. And generally, there's a video out there that tension does not exist. Uh, where I talk about, or did I just call it tension? There are some who have made the argument, and it's a valid argument that tension doesn't really exist. Tension is the word, is what we call it when we don't know any better. If I have a rope attached to the door and I pull, there's a tension there in the rope. I'm going to claim that it's a tension acting on the door because I don't know, or it doesn't really matter how the rope is attached to the door, because what force it really is depends on how it's attached. I don't know that, and I don't need to know it. So tension is sort of a catch-all for if I've got pulling with a rope chain string, something along those lines. So they're, they're saying that it's not real because you can't like measure it? No, it's not real in that it's actually some combination of the others. So if I've got, uh, if I'm pulling a block with a string, if the block has an eye hook on it, and I got the rope tied around here, then at that point it's a normal force. That's technically what's really pulling it. If I've got a block and the string is wedged in it, then technically that would be friction that's holding it. That's okay. Okay. So, I can see so generally in a problem where I've got a rope or string, I don't talk about how it's attached, I just say it's attached. And so we're gonna call that tension as opposed to getting into the weeds of how it actually is attached. Oh, okay. I'll leave that for your chemical engineering yeah. process. Just as gravitational force tries to bring things together, so does tension. 
if I'm pulling on the rope, if I'm on ice and I'm pulling on the rope like this, I'm gonna move that way. Whatever's over there potentially moves this way. But the two forces of tension will point towards each other. Friction requires desired relative motion. In other words, would there be relative motion between two objects if it were frictionless? If there would be relative motion, friction's involved. Friction will act opposite the direction of the desired motion. And the forces are anti-parallel. Well, they're all anti-parallel, but typically they're sort of side by side. It does require contact. Objects, of touching objects. What's an example of friction? As I push on this table here, the table's not moving. But if the ground were frictionless underneath the table, the table would move. Okay. So there's desired motion. The table wants to move that way relative to the carpet. Yeah. So the desired motion is in that direction. Friction is pushing on the table this way. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So like if you had a box up against a wall, but it wasn't moving, but you have to push up against it to hold it in place, there's some amount of friction holding yeah. it there. So you're saying pushing up, I mean, back and back and go like that. There's friction here because there's weight pulling down on the book. I don't find a normal force that way. The wall's applying a normal force this way on the book. Right. But because my force is horizontal, what's keeping it from falling? Friction. Friction. Because yeah. there's desired motion. The wall were frictionless, this book would be sliding down like that. Right. Okay. And indeed, I did push it upwards. Right. Okay. Or the case that a little bit harder to grasp, at least later on when we apply it. I'm moving right now. If the book were frictionless, so as I'm going this way, if the book were frictionless, which way would the calculator move? Relative to the book. The opposite direction. So the calculator wants to slide this way. So which way is the force, friction force acting on the 